Right there, guys. So I had somebody ask me about keeping creep chubs alive. <clears throat> and I keep creep chubs alive for long periods of time. Uh, hopefully, I use them up before they die or whatever, but normally I don't have them die. That's, I end up using them. So I wanted to show you a few things on this bait tank a little more in depth. I've done a video like this once before on a different channel, and I haven't done anything like this on this channel. So I wanted to show you this bait tank and what I'm using inside of it, and some things I'm going to change to upgrade it. So just hang with me and check it out, guys. Uh, maybe it can help you, maybe it won't. So. First of all, this tank is actually a giant cooler. If you ever watched uh, America's Deadliest Catch or whatever, or, or actually I'll tell you what it is, it's, it's a giant cooler that they ship um, like shrimp in, fish in, stuff like that on, on big giant boats and stuff. They pack it nice and that's what you got right here is a giant cooler. What I did is I put hinges on the lid. The lid would come off, but I put hinges on the lid and made it to where it's just accessible to use for me. So, but that's what this is. And, and if you look, you, I'll, actually I'll show you right here, right there, you will see what this actually is. So if you see that, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you would want to buy one, you probably want to pay dearly for it. This one, I got for nothing. I've had two of these. I gave one away, and I've had this one here for quite some time now, for many years. So. Just to show you how I set it up to where I can keep the lid open, I just put like a hold up there, and I just open the lid. It's just a bungee cord. It'll hold the lid when I'm doing something in there. So that's all that is. But we'll go a step further. I'm going to show you a little more. That's just how I hold my lid up. Now, the point that I want to make is, is this is under a pavilion. It being a cooler, when you put cool water in it, it stays cool for long periods of time. And when it starts to get, when I come out here and I feel it getting a little bit too warm for creek chubs or whatever, I'll just drain about half of it out, fill it back up. Then maybe a couple of days later, I'll drain it down, fill it back up. And I'll do that just every once in a while, maybe every, month maybe or something like that you don't want to shock your fish if you got them in there that long so do it a little bit at a time but that's how i keep my creek chubs alive good fresh water i cycle the water i'll just pull the drain off the side of it let the water out fill it back up maybe get all my creek chubs out run it so far down get my creek chubs out and then i'll uh, fill it back up with water it just depends on the, the case scenario I want to keep good fresh water. That's the key to keeping creek chubs alive. Good fresh water, clean water. I know you see them in ditches and stuff like that, but normally it's flowing water. And it's more of a higher oxygenated water. It's flowing and they're not just sitting like in a mud puddle. So that's a good key to keeping creek chubs. So as you can see here, Creek chubs like to get under anything they can find. But this is a pond pump with a filter on it. And I think this is about 600 gallons per hour. Keeps the water flowing. Then over here, you can see that. That goes to this right here. That puts out air. Let's see if we can get these guys to come out from under there. It's loaded up under there. 
See how they just follow stuff around? Your dirt loads up under there. <laughs> okay, that's the brand of my oxygenator. It's actually a two side, got two side, two outlets on it, but I, when I ran it through the side of each tank, I connected it and made it into one. Just so it just, it's just pushing a lot of air. Pushing a lot of air. So maybe I'll split it back off sometime and put it on something else. But as for right now, that's the way I had it. And as you see, I got the water level really low because I don't need that much for peat chubs in here. So. But again, that there is the aerator that I'm using. So if you're watching right there, if you see right there, here's a couple places that uh, you can um, get these aerators. They plug in the AC. Like I said, I've been running both these things here, the pump, pump cycling the water and filtering the water and the aerator itself. Like I said, for probably 10, 12 years. I don't know, I don't remember, but uh, I just plug them up. Now, obviously, I just run them during fishing season because in Ohio, it gets too cold and there's, I don't keep fish in the winter, so. So another question that you get sometimes is what do you feed your creek chubs? Well, I'll take a piece of bread sometimes and ball it up real hard where it's like, like almost like a dough ball. And I'll throw one of those in there. And every once in a while, I'll throw three, four, five, maybe even six night crawlers in there and let them sink. They'll chew them up and eat them. Uh, if, believe me, if creek chubs get too hungry, they'll find the weakest link in the bunch, and they'll kill another creek chub, and they'll start chewing on it and eating it. So they're not going to starve. They're going to find a way to eat as long as there's other fish in the tank. So, uh, of course, I do feed them and try to keep them from doing that. But... And once in a while you may walk out and you're going to find a skeleton, maybe a creek chub skeleton head in there. That's probably where they ate the other creek chub and they didn't eat the skeleton head, the head of the, head of the creek chub or whatever. So that once in a while you might find something like that. But I haven't found them like that lately because I keep up on feeding them fairly good. So I don't need to feed them too long. I don't want to keep them that long. I want to fish with them. So on this tank, you got on each corner, well, two corners, this front corner and the back corner around back here. You got a valve right there. You can unscrew it and you can drain the water right out. It lays flush with the bottom so you can empty it all the way around. See in the back of there? The other one is right there. And the other one is right here. On these tanks, at least on these tanks anyway. Like I said, another good key to keeping your creek chubs good and alive is keeping the water cool. If you got something like this, you can put it in a shady place uh, in your garage. I got this, like I said, this one's outside under the pavilion. But uh, the main thing is to keep the water cool. If that water gets too hot, the oxygen is going to drop. Things start to happen, start losing creek chubs. So uh, I've been pretty lucky with. Like I said, getting being able to get a tank like this is, is very well uh, insulated, so it works really good. Uh, something I did do, I wanted to show you. As you can see, I put a piece of plexiglass on there just to let in a little bit of light. Uh, that I don't want it completely dark in there all the time because I believe that fish need a little bit of light at least. I, I know it takes away from the... the uh, the cooler effect to where the insulated effect if you want to say to where it maybe takes away a little bit of insulation to where it may warm up a little quicker but being out here in the shade I don't think it's going to hurt it but these sides are thick that's what matters the sides are thick what's left up there is basically enclosed and it keeps everything from heating up and getting hot so uh, it's kept very well kept very well it's dirty, but it keeps it keeps fish really good. So I was going to show you a little bit about this pump. I'm going to leave it running. I'm just going to lift it up and show you how movable it is. 
So what this does, guys, let me turn this off. What this does, is it pulls water through here, through the filter, brings it up, and back out. Nice good flow. I want to say this is five or six hundred gallons per per hour or something, which is plenty. And I'm probably going to replace this whole unit. There's another one that I'm looking at that I, it's more, I, I believe it's more compact and don't take up as much room. And the shout, which is the, the fountain spout, if you want to say, is directly on top of it. So there's not a hose. What I've done, what I've actually done with this one over time, is the hose that goes to the thing, just taking it in and out. I have, it, being old, I have stamped it and I wrapped it with black tape. And that holds it together fine, which it's, it's fine. As you can see, it works just fine. But I do want to pick up a new one. So that will flow water a little better. And then I think I'm going to connect to it and put a Venturi on it, actually, to give it a little current in there going around. So I think that's really going to help. I think the Creek Chubs will enjoy that, too, because they're used to current. They're used to being in places where there's uh, like a, a stream or or a ditch or something where there's current moving. So they do like that un uncoming current. So just to make them happier, I don't know. It makes me happy. Another thing I never really turn, I never really turn this stuff off. It stays running all the time. There's no need to turn it off. Not for me anyway, it runs all the time. You don't see it in your electric bill. It's a low wattage pool. So there's, there's nothing that it affects or hurts. So we're going to close this up, guys, and hopefully, maybe this will give you an idea how to keep creek chubs, how to keep them alive, how to keep the water fresh, how to, uh, like I said, the main thing is keep the water cool, clean, fresh. Uh, you don't have to fight with it all the time, but you do need to tend to it every once in a while if you do want to keep creek chubs. Like I said, I've had these in here now for quite a few weeks. Uh, I get them out in the back back here, but I've had these in here for quite a few weeks, no problems. Uh, I've kept, I've actually had shad in here. I've had goldfish in here, bluegills. I've had, you name it, I've had everything in this tank and it always works out. I've never had no problem. Now I wouldn't overload it, put 10,000 bluegill in there or something, but uh, this is a pretty big tank. This tank works very good for, for what I do, so. Something else I wanted to show you is like something like this I pick up at the thrift store. It's actually a cooler. It's an igloo cooler. I wouldn't buy one of these brand new because you're gonna pay a lot of money for it. But it's an igloo cooler. And what I do is you get these from Walmart, it's just a six dollar bubbler. It takes two AA batteries and it runs forever. Like it'll run all day, all night, and it might start to slow down. But I'll show you how I got this done. This is for if I want to transfer or take chubs with me or take bluegill with me or whatever. This keeps the water cool. Just in case you're curious, I'm gonna show you the inside of it. So like I said, you got your little bubble box in there. And what it did is the lid just comes right off. It, it's actually a, a, a fit type, type lid. So I just drilled a hole right through the side of it, run the bubbler in there. That way the lid can shut. And I think I made a net for it. I laid the net to the side of it. But this net was a lot longer. I cut it down so the net fits inside of it. Just a little bit bigger net. I can't remember where I got this net. But I just cut the wire off, bent it back around, wrapped it around. And if you've ever messed with creek chubs, you will know that they're hard to grab. You're trying to chase them around in water. They're very fast and they're very sleek like an eel. And they're not the easiest thing to catch sometimes. So just remember to have something like that with you. Like I said, this is also, I believe in coolers. So that's what we have there. Like I said, lots of times you can go to the thrift store and find something like that. Not all the time. I got lucky and found this one actually. I used to use a different one. You had to put your hand through a hole about this big and I got tired of it. So, so anyhow guys like I said I usually keep this here um, like just the other day 
I cleaned this out. I actually washed this, the bait tank out. And what I did was, is I drained the water all the way down, started scooping out the creek chubs with a bigger net that I got over here, this net here, and started getting them out with that. And I put all the creek chubs inside this here and just let it run while I finished washing it out, sprayed it out real good, cleaned it all out, cleaned off all my filters and filled back up the water to where I wanted it and just dumped them right back in there. So I always keep this out here in case I need it. If I go on a trip, as you'll see, you'll see some other stuff coming when I'm out on a trip or whatever, we're camping or whatever. I run this, I bring this and I got chubs in here, maybe a few bluegill, I catch bluegill wherever I'm at, put them in there, keeps them, runs all night long. So anyhow guys, just wanted to tell you that you can keep creek chubs. A lot of guys tell you that you can't, but if you do the things right, keep everything clean, fresh water, and I'm kind of going on about that because that's what it takes to keep, keep, that's what it takes to keep creek chubs. So, you can keep it for a short period of time in some dirty water, I guess. I don't know. Actual big bait tank itself is going to cost you money, but I don't recommend buying it because I don't want to pay that much for one. I got mine for free, so. I got mine for free, so I don't want to pay that much for one, but what I got is what I got. It works great. It's one of the best things I've ever had for a bait tank. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, Give us a thumbs up if you like what I just showed you. If it helped you, make a comment. If there's something else you want to know, make a comment. I'm not scared to answer questions, so thanks guys. Have a good one.